arriving out of Liverpool, England, born in Cyprus. He's Ryo Yamasaki. The UFC has brought some of the best MMA fights I've ever seen, though it does at times bring about a real stinker. But even those end up surprising fans in the end, such as Dominic Cruz versus Cody Garbrandt. And no one thought this fight would amount to anything. In the back, protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. I want you to fight hard, but fight clean. You want to touch gloves to person? Even if I were someone who bet on sports, I would have ended up betting on Cruz. Why so? That's just how unfair the match was, with Cruz expected to destroy his opponent. The fight occurred at UFC 207, and no one expected it to end the way it did. Of course, some people refused to watch the fight because it was an unfair matchup, claiming that Garbrandt was being sent to his death. That makes sense, since at the time, he'd only had one win in the top 10. On the other hand, his opponent, Cruz, was on one of the best runs possible. Good leg kick there by the champion. Maybe even the best run of his entire career. But boy, did Garbrandt prove everyone wrong. Not only did he put on one of the best fights that the UFC has ever featured, but it was the performance of a lifetime. But he turned the tables and completely dominated the incredibly skilled Cruz. By Cruz, Cody all over. Oh, big right hand by Cruz. By Cody. They want him to get stationary. They don't want him to get flat footed. He even won the bantamweight title from the UFC following that. This is exactly why supporting the underdog is the best experience. Out of nowhere, they'll always surprise everyone. It's one of the most exciting fights in the UFC, but nothing compared to John Jones versus Thiago Santos. This one takes place at UFC 239. This is the first time anyone thought this would turn into as big of a deal as it now is. People couldn't care less about this one. Some people ended up saying that this fight had nothing competitive about it claiming that it was another case of an underdog going up against someone that's a living legend. I can't disagree with that. What in the world were they thinking while setting this fight up? Santos has had some good fights and runs, with a reputation as a 185-pound gatekeeper, but he was nothing compared to arguably the best fighter to have ever lived, John Jones himself. While some people may not agree with that sentiment, for the most part, he is. In the end, things went Jones' way, but that's not before an incredible match. Santos brought his best to the fight, and you could see him bringing Jones to his limits the entire time. He just tore up everything on his knees, and for most of those five rounds, it seemed like it would be an easy win for Santos. But right at the end, Jones ended up winning because of a split decision, ultimately keeping his title safe. But Santos made a mark in history as the only person who's ever won a scorecard against Jones. A huge achievement for anyone. While this fight was incredible, I can't ignore Luke Rockhold versus Michael Bisping. This fight isn't like the other ones that I'm going to be covering in this video. You might be asking yourself, what makes this one so different? Well, just the fact that fans weren't completely against it, at least not at first. That, and it's more of an incredible moment rather than a fight for the ages. The only reason they didn't hate the fight was that they were generally happy that Bisping finally got his chance at getting a title. But that doesn't mean that fans didn't think the fight would suck. Not just that, but no one expected him to be able to win that title anyway. I mean, fair enough. He had just been destroyed by the same opponent 18 months ago, along with just having a 17-day notice as well. It's hard for even the best to perform properly under those circumstances, but he proved everyone wrong. He wouldn't be on this list if he didn't, and he got his revenge. His victory shouldn't have been possible, yet it still happened, and finally led him to get the UFC gold title. You could make a film out of this, but you know what could make an even better film? You guessed it, Henan Barrow versus TJ Dillashaw. It's incredible to see the underdog finally win something big and get what they deserve. Dillashaw may just be the best example of a moment like that. Though he wasn't always going to go up against Barao. Barao was first supposed to defend his title against Rafael Asuncao. Of course, all this took place at UFC 173, but due to some circumstances, Asuncao had to eventually drop the fight and tend to those matters instead. What made this problem even worse was that the UFC didn't have a lot of options for a replacement at the time, so Dillashaw was their best bet for a good fight, and he was more than ready to take Barao on. Though back in the day, at least when the fight took place, he wasn't a big name in the sport. In fact, almost no one even knew that he existed. That's how lightly regarded he was in the UFC at the time, especially since he'd managed to win one and lose the other in his last two fights. But that wasn't going to stop the fighter from wreaking absolute havoc on his opponent. The fighter came onto the UFC more than just prepared and ended up putting on one of the best fights he's ever fought. He was so good that he completely dominated his opponent and ended up winning that fight. What's even more exciting was that the fight went on to the fifth round and ended up with 
with Burrell getting knocked out. Dillashaw then left with a UFC goal. On the other hand, who can forget about Demetrius Johnson versus Tim Elliott? Sadly, this one doesn't really end up in a win for the underdog, but that doesn't mean that it isn't a fight that was an absolute treat to watch. Let's go back to 2016, when Johnson got so good at the sport that the UFC had to put together a completely different event. It was called the Ultimate Fighter Season, and its main goal was finally finding someone to challenge Johnson. In fact, they had to search the entire world for flyweight contenders that had won in other organizations and only invited them. The tournament was then put together, and Tim Elliott ended up winning it. Despite that, no one really thought he would be able to do much against him. I mean, it makes sense, since he didn't bring many good fights while he was still in the UFC. But something was different this time. He had certainly improved a lot, so much so that he actually almost knocked out Johnson in just the first round between them. Though Johnson found his flow and won the fight with a unanimous decision. Elliott was so close to winning, but it still brought about an incredible fight. There's no denying that. Something else that no one can deny being an incredible fight is Amanda Nunes versus Jermaine Durandamy. No one was really concerned about Durandamy defeating Nunes. Why is that so? Well, this fight is back from 2019, when Nunes was just given the title of women's GOAT in the UFC. Plus, she'd already defeated her once before. In UFC 245, Durandamy completely crushed Nunes, and the only reason Nunes kept her belt was because of a decision. Here's to the underdogs who always prove their worth. Those are all the fights that fans thought would suck that rocked in the UFC. See you in the next video. He got hurt at tag there. He, did. he got tagged. Nice moving back. They're fighting out of Liverpool, England, born in Cyprus. He's won all but one of his fights by strikes. Has trained a little bit in life. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Mario Yamasaki. Oh, oh good, good takedown. Take Very nice. Timed it and perfectly. Scramble. Back to his feet is Bisping. Escaped to full guard here. He's going to try to get his right leg out. Bisping likes a Kimura. You see him uh, reaching for that arm on the right. You know, he likes to blitz get all over you, so I stayed composed like a champion, just relaxed and then worked my way out of it, and I knew my grappling. Out of her hands tonight, Nunez of the 100. And Tim came in here, and everybody he... Contest at Austin outside are Mike Bell, Derek Cleary, and... No offense to Jim. No offense. Yeah, for Santos to attack yes. the lower legs. Digging his underhook. Good job here. He's got double underhooks now. With so much time being spent. Oh!